So in this video, how I installed this heat pump system for both air conditioning and heating needs in this house by myself. Now, if you watch the manufacturing marketing materials, it looks pretty simple to install these systems. Basically, you put the condenser where it needs to go, you put the air handler where it needs to go, you run the pre-charge line set, hook them up, turn it on, and you're good to go. And essentially, that is what you do, but it is a little bit more involved than that. So I wanted to take the time in this video to show you what the process was. In my situations, I'm not an HVAC professional by any means. And so take this video lightly. This is just how I got it done but I was able to install it myself, kind of. First thing to point out here is when I opened up the manual for these products, one of the very first things it says, unit must be installed by a professional. So consider that when you install air conditioning systems, a lot of times you need special permits, you need to do electrical, you need to do ductwork. So there's a lot involved in it. So I'm gonna show you how I did it all and you can decide whether or not you think it's a DIY project or not. Now to start, I went ahead and I cut an access hole in the attic ceiling because I was gonna need to run a new line set from the air handler to the outside condenser. So I cut a hole in the soffit for the outside as well so we can run the new lines through the attic. So one of the first things I need to do before I even think about installing the new system is I gotta get rid of the old system. Now, it's not just as simple as just ripping it out because you actually have refrigerant in this system and that needs to be discarded of properly so in this case I am calling on a professional to help me get rid of the old refrigerant in this system then I can take all this out before we start the installation of the new AC system. Now when I was deciding on what system I wanted I was actually leaning on going towards like a mini split system because I thought that would be the most efficient and I'll probably talk in a future video on why I chose this unit but for the sake of this video this seems like a highly efficient unit and it seemed like I'd be able to do the installation myself. Okay so we have the old handler out we just took it out now it's time to put the new one in and it's very similar dimensions for the most part. It's a little bit taller than the last unit and that actually causes some complications because I have to go from this and attach it to the new air handler and it's going to require some custom metalwork, some custom ductwork. Not my expertise but it's something I'm just going to have to do. I think the base plenum box is going to work okay but I have to build up the top. So I got to figure that out now and unfortunately I think that means that we will not have AC for at least another day or two and hopefully the weather is mild. <laughs> this thing's super heavy and I don't think I can handle it by myself and I think it would just be better if it is as light as it can be so when I gotta make any adjustments or anything, I can handle that. So what I'm trying to do now is just disassemble the majority of the air handler. I'm gonna take this bar out and I'm gonna see if I can at least take out the coil assembly. All right, that should lighten things up for us. So this is what they call the coil inside the air handler. Basically, air from the blower gets sucked through a hole under here, out through these vents, and then distributed throughout the house. So this is where the heat exchange happens to cool and or warm the house. Pretty critical piece. So this is still pretty heavy. I wouldn't recommend doing it by yourself. I called every neighbor I could try and no one was around, so. And I just gotta slide it in place. So now that this is in place, the next thing I'm going to do is seal it in with the metal tape. And one little trick is if this metal's cold, this stuff doesn't stick well. So it's a good idea to heat it up first. Here's a look at my duct transition. It's a little messy, but it should get the job done. So the way I have this set up is I have these aluminum blocks down here to mount it to. I have a piece of neoprene, which I just use some old like gym floor mat. Cut a piece of that off. 
and then I'm bolting through using some bolt head around the house. Uh, they're stainless steel. I think they'll work okay for this situation, but essentially what I want to do is I'll put some washes in a nut on the bottom. I'll go through. I'll put this little rubber part here on top of the metal of the condenser unit here, and then this little rubbery thing here will separate the stainless steel from the regular steel. So I think that should work well and hold it down nice and snug. Next, I was ready to run the pre-charge line sets through the attic. And while I was doing this, I added some thermostat cable to go from the air handler to the new condenser. Now, since I'm just replacing the old handler, it makes it easy to reuse the power that's already there. So I just stick it in the machine and then I have to attach it to the load inputs on the air handler. So in this case, I want to attach the copper wire to the ground screw, snug that down, and then I'm only running a 15 amp circuit here because I'm not running an auxiliary heater. So in this case, my white and my black wires are my load lines and they go to the load screws. Now before attaching the line sets, I have to attach these, I think they're check valves. And I torqued them down to what the instructions said in the manual. And I believe the smaller one was a little bit less torque and the larger one was closer to 70 Newton meters. And then I did the same thing outside as well. I just hand threaded them at first and then I torqued them down and I try to be careful here not to put too much strain on the air condenser itself so not to bend anything. And then to make sure the pipes fit I went ahead and cut some insulation off to have easier access to maneuvering the pipes here. Put this on, hand thread it to start, tighten it to 45 Newton meters. Then we're going to do the same thing on the larger line set. Just crank it down, and again, I believe the snugness here is 45 newton meters. And then we're going to connect the line set at the handler as well. And again, these connections are scoped at 45 newton meters, I believe. Once I remove these caps, I can get in with an Allen key to open the valves to connect the line set refrigerant to the refrigerant in the air handler. So I do the same thing on the big line down below, open it up, and now we've connected the refrigerant inside these lines to the handler as well. And then I move on to the outside air condenser, do the same thing, use a little soap water, spray around, make sure there's no bubbles and we're good to go. And then at this point, I just cover up my exposed copper with some insulation. Now we need to connect the power to the condenser and this is just like inside i'm just going to screw the lines into the terminals and in this case the black and white are my hots and the copper is the ground then i just secured things to the zip tie here to snug it down wiring the thermostat cables was similar we just made little loops in the line and then screwed them down to these terminals made sure it's nice and snug So basically here I have the thermostat cable coming from the actual thermostat and then the cable going out to the air condenser. Oops, I almost forgot. We got a safety switch. I'm going to run that wire through there as well. Wiring the thermostat wires is similar to wiring up the power wires both in here and in the condenser. Just take these screws out and then put these wires in there. So in this case, this is supposed to be my white wire. I wouldn't necessarily trust my wire coloring. Each situation might be different. You note I also installed the kill switch and I wired that into the red wire, which is here. So if that float switch were to trip, it should turn the whole system off. Nice and snug. I still have the B wire, which is gonna be my orange, I think, and my yellow wire right here, boom. So I finally have everything wired up both here in the air handler and outside at the air condenser. At this point, I've hit another major speed bump. There is a leak in the coil. So I can't fire the AC up until I figure out how we're gonna fix that or if I'm gonna replace them or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and test the blower, see how the ductwork holds up. So I'm gonna do that now. I flip the breaker. Now I'm going to try to turn it on at the thermostat. Very stoked the fan fired up and it appears that my ductwork is holding. Very cool. 
Now to deal with the messy line set. So I had some pressure treated wood around. I went ahead and mounted a mount board to the bricks and then built a box and screwed that to the mount board. It looks okay. And then to install the float switch, I was able to reuse the existing drain plumbing from the existing handler. So that was pretty simple to do and secured it with PVC cement. So at this point, everything's hooked up. Condensers set up here, air handlers inside, line sets are run. But our problem is, is we lost a lot of refrigerant because the air handler scent had a coil that had a leak in it. So we went ahead and we patched that leak, but we are low on refrigerant because of what was lost. So I'm in a problematic situation here because I'm trying to find someone to come out and actually add refrigerant to the system. So today I have another HVAC technician coming out. He implies he is familiar with the system. I'm hoping he is. And this will be my third HVAC technician visit for this DIY project. So hopefully this will operate smoothly from here on out. It's actually turning on now and you can actually see that it's surprisingly quiet. And that's one of the reasons I like this unit here. So outside is super cold, inside it is nice and toasty. I'm able to work here in comfort because everything is working and I am pretty stoked. <laughs> so the takeaway, is this a DIY system? In my situation, it took three visits from an HVAC tech to get this project done. So I guess technically I can't say it was a complete DIY project. Having said that, I am glad I went through it. I learned a lot. I do like the system so far and I look forward to the efficiencies from it. And I'll provide a link to where you can get this same unit down below. My only question is, is that we added refrigerant to the system. I'm guessing there was some air in the lines. And I would like to ask the pros out there, is that okay just to top off a system with new refrigerant when it's a little bit low? Or is there some other way that this should be dealt with? Thanks for watching.